episode 117. Are these comics going to make great television shows and movies? We got Green Lantern. We have the Hulk. And we have Dick Tracy. Let's talk about him right now. All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thank you so much for spending time with me as we talk about movies, television shows, and comic books, as well as the occasional board game. I am your host, Frank Zenka. I'm an award-winning screenwriter, novelist, and comic book writer, as well as a filmmaker. Uh, so that's why I want to look at these uh, books in a different light. So we're going to go through their story. So we do have some spoilers in here. But before we do, remember to give me that like, give me that thumbs up, give me that uh, subscribe if you can. I am trying to grow the channel out. If you like what you see here, there's plenty more. Uh, and also, I am a designer myself. And uh, Mark Spears, who does cover art for a lot of the publishers, uh, he's done Spawn, he's done Power Rangers, he's done Spider-Man, he's done Vampirella, he did Neo Pavorzad a few months ago, stuff like that. We launched a uh, card game called Myth Lords Classic Monsters, and it is on Backer Kit. You can click the link in the description below. It'll take you right there. You can check out videos, etc. Uh, it's an awesome game. We'll talk a little bit more about it at the end of the video. But if you want to support that, we are in our final week. All right, so let's jump in on Green Lantern, which is uh, done by my buddy Jeremy Adams, and if you haven't seen his uh, Super Sons uh, cartoon, it was a cartoon movie, uh, I think it's still on Max, I definitely suggest checking that out because it's done very, very well. Uh, so this is a book I've been kind of waiting for uh, because uh, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Hal and Carol as uh, ring wielders. I want to say ring bearers, but that, does, that wasn't right. So this is about uh, Hal Jordan, for the most part, and the other rest of the core. Uh, he, he, Jeremy was trying to figure out how to make it so that his ring, that because he inherited some of these storylines, that he willed this ring into existence, and how that happened, and you know all that stuff. He he tried to create a storyline around that. But this is also about the United Planets because the Guardians of Oa are gone. And now we have this nefarious United Planets going on. And I think uh, Earth is cordoned off at this point. And they're destroying batteries. And uh, Carol is dating this guy. And she really doesn't want to marry him. But at the same time, she feels that if she gets married... Then she's locked herself away from Hal. And uh, because she knows Hal's a bad influence on her, but she's in love with him, but she can't ever get away from him. So she was trying to get married. But as she was doing her vows, like in Vegas, uh, the, silver, the star sapphire ring came to her. And I am sad that they did not do a similar costume. They went a very generic costume as opposed to her old costume. Uh, but anyway, so in the last uh, issue, which I thought was very strange, Kyle was literally on the floor, and he's still there. The rest of the Green Lanterns are taken captive or whatever else, but then he destroys uh, their ring somehow. So everybody's like, I don't know how that just happened, because now you know even their uniforms are gone, and that kind of thing. So... I have no idea what happened there, but that is a mystery for another day because we are talking about a full battle because Hal went to confront Theros, not to be confused with Thanos, who's the head of the United Planets, uh, went to confront him because they found out that uh, and have proof or whatever else that he's destroying power batteries, but the rest of the council knew about it already, so now we have this whole full-on battle going on. And, uh, you know, some of this stuff is really, really nice work. And it keeps the, uh, it keeps everything moving. And I, you know, whenever you're dealing with Green Lanterns, of course, you have to use your imagination as a writer to, you know, what kind of powers and abilities they come up with and what kind of weapons that they conjure uh, and make constructs out of, etc. And then as he's uh, going, he's out of the uh, thing, he stops or is stopped by these guys, and then he sees the 
pink uh, aura, and he says, "Oh, you guys are in trouble." Which in Green Arrow, he had this. The uh, Ollie had the same line when Black Canary was coming up. So, just saying. But anyway, there's Carol in her uh, Star Sapphire costume, which again is a, you know more generic. She had a lot more skin showing in the uh, original one. And I'm sorry that they changed it. And but uh, the I guess these guys are no match for her. And she takes them down pretty easily with the power of love, and that's what uh, that is what the uh, the the pink ring uh, is signets is uh, is love, you know, where the green is will. So we can break into Huey Lewis there with the power of love, but uh, anyway, uh, Hal is wounded, so she takes him away. Um. Where are we? So she's uh, she takes him right back to Earth, and meanwhile, Theros is like, "Yeah, this is happening. <laughs> that was a really good try, but uh, you you missed the mark, buddy." So anyway, the Theros is uh, has this very unique ring on his finger. I don't even know what to think of that. Uh, it's interesting that it kind of has a bunch of the things combined but what and then they have his power battery that has all the colors together i don't know how that works but then he goes and uh and contacts waller and i guess they have a deal that they uh they revealed in the last issue that waller is helping him on planet earth so that the united planets stay away from earth which is kind of why it's quarantined so he says Hal Jordan is there. I want you to get him. And they have a little power battle back and forth before they finally both agree to each other's terms. And Carol's nose looks really weird there. Uh, but anyway, they talk and, you know, she tells him I was about to get married, but, you know, I'm with you to the end kind of thing. And, you know, she realizes that it was going to be a mistake. And then, kaboom, uh, the Suicide Squad shows up. So there's that. <laughs> and then we get this stupid backup story about Guy Gardner getting the wrong Lobo and all this stuff. And, you know, I don't really care about it. Uh, I guess it's trying to hook into this absolute power thing, but I don't care. Uh, overall, uh, really good stuff. Really good stuff. Um, would it make a good movie? Probably, yeah. Wait to see where this goes. Uh, but I think it needed, some of the stuff needs to be a little bit more condensed because it would be hard to make a movie out because there's so many Green Lanterns in it. So it would need to be a little bit more streamlined, uh, to be into a film. But, uh, I like the whole Carol thing. I hope like the whole United Planets thing. Um, and I, like, this couldn't be a first movie, but after you introduced a lot of these people, I think it could be. All right, so let's jump into the Hulk uh, so we have Nick Klein returning on art, and, uh, there, Hulk is, this is more of a horror book now with Hulk. Uh, he, this is by Philip Kennedy Johnson, and he's, he was doing, like, Monster of the Week, but there's a girl named Charlie that's been hanging with him this whole time. Uh, she ends up killing her, her father or wounding him or whatever, um, but she's blamed, I think she's blamed for his death one way or another, but she was taking her brother who died, uh, I guess they were both abused and that kind of thing. She has like a scar on her face, but anyway, the last monster that they were fighting, she ends up being turned into like a porcelain doll. And now there's no body for her to go back to. So he goes to see brother Voodoo and brother Voodoo says, well, you're going to have to go into this other dimension and talk to this guy who creates flesh. So it's like a flesh demon or whatever. So anyway, now they're both down there. So the Hulk is now separated from Banner. So they're having their own little tiff going on. So Hulk is throwing Banner around and he's like, you know, you, so yeah, we want to cure her. And we like, cure means kill me. So I, instead, I'm going to kill you. And then we got this little really disgusting thing of this guy hanging, you know, upside down uh, with this, uh, things are eating him, basically, and he's got this 
weight on the bottom going, uh, so pulling him apart, and that's exactly what happens. He literally, his legs rip apart. <laughs> so now the creatures now go after them. Uh, so we have uh, this creature here. Uh, that's almost like a bird. And Hulk comes in and smashes it around. And uh, we find a sword for Bruce. And <laughs> Bruce throws it at him like it's going to do anything to him. But anyway, so... They end up taking the bird and going... Now, that's pretty cool art right there. To see this flesh eater guy or flesh creator guy. And they're like, well, come out because we need this. And he's like, you're commanding me? Like, I'm a peasant? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the detail on some of this art is phenomenal. Uh, then there's that blood hunt stuff. I, I'm not even bothering with any of that. So they're like, show yourself. And he's like, you don't command me. And I have all these different bodies uh that are i control and they're all like minotaurs and stuff like that so they get into this huge battle and uh the god is like well that you have immense power meaning hulk and i want it uh but it ends up being the spider guy and they throw a thing up there just to, to ignite it for so that they can see him and Hulk takes him down pretty easily, and that's when he says, Oh my god, immense power. I, I need to have it. And we're going to see that in a second, so I don't know how this is going to lead. But anyway, so he says, I can't do get give you the body that you're looking for. You need to go somewhere else, and he tells him where to go. But meanwhile, he slashes Hulk, and Hulk drops blood, and the blood is like turned into a clone. And as they're getting whisked away back to Brother Voodoo's, uh, so I guess it, now he has a duplicate of Hulk in that dimension. I, I don't know. I don't know where that's going to go. But we don't find out. And instead he goes on his way to where the other guy told him to go. And that's it for that. Uh, it's kind of going off the rails a lot at this point. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to stick with it. We're on 13 right now. Uh, legacy numbering 794. Uh, I might go to 800, which is, uh, you know, six more issues. Uh, if I can go that long, I don't know. But I'd like to get uh, issue 800. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's okay. Would it make a good film? Originally, yes, I liked the horror side of it. But now it's just falling off the rails and I'm going to say no. All right, so let's go into Dick Tracy. Uh, I was a big fan of Dick Tracy when I was a kid. I liked the two-way wrist watch radio. <laughs> That's what it was called. <laughs> whenever they had, whenever they had it in the panel, they always like this is what this thing is called. <laughs> uh, but anyway, now we have smartphones. <laughs> we have and we have we literally have Dick Tracy watches that are probably more advanced than what he had back in the day. Uh, but anyway, we start out, oh, so there's a murder he's investigating of a, a, uh, journalist that was killed in a diner, and they killed everyone in the diner, and now we have, uh, Tessa, uh, Tess Trueheart is trying to help, uh, Dick Tracy get the information he needs, because I think it was his, her father or whatever else that was killed, because his name was also Trueheart, and she found a key to his desk or whatever uh, before she was kind of molested by these guys. You know, she's not molested physically, uh, not sexually, but like physically thrown out of the room. And uh, and then Flat Top ended up trying to mow them down. Uh, they ended up escaping. Uh, so there was uh, a lot of stuff going on at this point. Uh, we still have no idea what all the mystery is but we're getting little clues that it's going to be about some kind of a real estate thing or whatever but anyway we start out with this guy pat Patton. uh he goes down to the docks to get a job but he's not really looking for a job he's looking for the guy that killed his brother so they end up you know taking him but he, he escapes pretty easily and knocks them out uh and says yeah, I'm trying to find the guy that, you know, killed my brother. Oh, and he's like, your your brother was such a loss or whatever. That's right. This guy shows up in the doorway 
And he's like, you. So we're going to see that pick up. And then Dick Tracy picked up Mumbles, uh, who had some information what the deaths were about, but he can't really question them because nobody can understand them. And instead of, I don't know if he can even write. I'm not sure because they don't even go into that. But anyway, as he's trying to figure out what the guy is saying, the captain comes and takes him away. And this whole thing is about war. So he, so Dick Tracy and Pat Patton were in war together. And, you know, each one of them is having this PTSD from World War II because Dick Tracy takes place, you know, in the 50s. Uh, so all these people would have been in the war. Uh, they've been back for 10 years at this point or something to that effect. But anyway, Pat Patton uh, ends up uh, talking to Pruneface about his brother and, of course, again, he's ta been taken away. Uh, but I don't think he got much information out of him uh, except for pissing him off. So now Dick Tracy ends up running into Pat Pat. And Pat's like, yeah, we need to talk. And they talk about the thing. And he wants to know what Trueheart said. Uh, I don't know how this fits in with his brother. But he said there were other people disappearing as well. It wasn't just his brother. So there's all that, and uh, he uh, Mumbles gets taken into uh, protective custody, <laughs> but not really, because uh, all they did was set him up for flat top, and flat top lays him out. So Mumbles is now dead. So we're killing off people already, and we're only in book two. <laughs> Anyway, he's talking to Pat, and they're trying to compare notes about stuff that they found, and Tess just barges in, in the middle of their conversation, which I thought was really strange. I don't know why somebody would just barge into something like that, but anyway, there was a, uh, a, a recording of Mumbles, and she's trying to figure it out, and what, they, what she does uh, realize is that a name named Mip Lips Manless uh, was in these recording multiple times. So she was able to decipher at least a name out of all of his gobbledygook. So anyway, then we I guess we move to Lips Manless, uh, who we see is being visited by one of his goons, and he's like, uh, Mumbles was killed, and Mumbles was killed by uh, Flat Top, and he's like, we're going to war, Betty. And that's the end of that. So I... Uh, I don't know if I was a big fan of the movie with Madonna and Warren Beatty. I liked the look and feel of it with all the pastel colors, but there really wasn't much to the film itself. Uh, this is a little bit more gritty and down to earth, so I like it, and I think it would. I think a new Dick Tracy movie. I don't, I don't know where this is going yet, uh, but so far I like it. But I think that the crime itself is a little mundane. I would have liked to see something more. Uh, but I'm going to stick with it. And Hulk, Hulk just going downhill, man. I don't know. I would not, I, I like the Monster of the Week thing for a movie like doing the horror side, but it's, it's just going on and on and on and on without going anywhere. And Green Lantern, yep, really good stuff in this issue. I liked it a lot, and I'm waiting to see him take on the, uh, him and Carol take on the, uh, uh Suicide Squad. It's going to be pretty cool. All right, well, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, remember to give me that uh, thumbs up, give me that like, give me that subscribe, ring that bell, ding, ding, if you can. Help me grow the channel out. Uh, and also, remember, in the uh, description, there will be a link in the description below uh, for Myth Lords, which is uh, our classic Monsters card game for one to five players where you're playing as one of the classic monsters, Dracula, Frankenstein, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Werewolf. You can also pick up other characters. There's also the Brides are in here, uh, Bride of Frankenstein, so the Vampire Brides, Bride of Frankenstein, a lot of Brides in here, and the Mummy, and you can also attach weapons and vehicles and everything else to them. And if that's not enough, we also have a expansion based on Wizard of Oz, including Mark Spears' artwork, where you can play as Dorothy or the Wicked Witch, and then there's other characters in here as well, like the Cowardly Lion and, uh, and Tin Man and Scarecrow. There's also the other witches and Glinda and Glinda, not Glinda, and uh, the uh, Flying Monkeys, all that stuff. 
uh, and of course there's different locations and Toto too and Toto's in there as well. So definitely check out some of my other videos before you uh, leave. Um, I have a couple of uh, new movies that just came out, mainly The Watchers and Firebrand. And, uh, and that's it. Well, thank you guys so much again for watching and I will see you on the next episode.